You know, sometimes when I teach um, my real estate investment analysis class or advanced real estate finance, sometimes students struggle with this concept called the internal rate of return in conjunction with the net present value. So what I've done here is just, I, I've simply put together a little spreadsheet that shows and proves that the internal rate of return is the discount rate that causes the net present value to equal zero. Let's take a, a real quick look here. So what I've done is I've simply just kind of created a series of cash flows for a, a hypothetical investment opportunity we have here in time zero. Remember there are three buckets of money that we need to underwrite uh, when we're taking a look at uh, cash flows for an investment opportunity in, in, in any way, shape or form. Now in our particular classes, we focus on real estate and primarily the multifamily product type. So in this particular instance, we have our three buckets right here, right? We've got time zero. That's the first bucket of money that we need to underwrite. <clears throat> That's going to be our cash in the deal at the very beginning. How much is my initial investment? What is the amount of cash that I need to come up with in order to close the acquisition? That's time zero. That's cash out. Therefore, since it's cash out, it's a negative number. So that's time zero. Bucket two, and th this is bucket one. Bucket two is going to be our before tax cash flow from operations. Now for a real estate product type that we take a look at, it's going to be the net operating income less the annual debt service. That's if there's a trust deed or a mortgage on, on, on the property. So uh, net operating income less the annual debt service will equal my before tax cash flow from operations. This is bucket two. Then finally, the third bucket that I need to underwrite is going to be what is going to be my net cash flow that I receive at the end of the at the end of the hold period when I dispose of the asset when I sell it when I exchange it when I give it away what is going to be the value of that disposition so here the net cash flow which is going to be perhaps my sales price less the um, mortgage balance here at the end of year five uh, less perhaps some disposition closing costs. <clears throat> there might be some broker fees, right? Uh, escrow title, all the Mickey Mouse that we have to pay at the end of the deal just to get out from underneath it. So we've got time zero out 150. We've got five years of before tax cash flows amounting to these amounts. And then finally, at the end of year five, we're going to have net cash in of 350. So then over the course of these five years, here are going to be my future values, right? At the end of year one, future value 5,000. At the end of year two, two years hence, into the future, future value 5,500. <clears throat> All the way out to year five, I'm going to net $360,000 when I sell it, right? I've got my operating cash flows, my 350 when I bounce, and then that's going to equal my 360 total into me, likely at some time toward the end of the fifth year of hold. Okay. Now, of course, do I do we know if these are actual numbers? Of course not. I just pulled them out of the air. It doesn't matter for this particular scenario. But what my students do is they calculate these in our classes. So, <clears throat> pardon me. We have 150 out at time zero. We have these total cash flows in at the end of these respective years. Therefore, my internal rate of return is 21.87%. In fact, if I show you how to do this here real quick, it's simple. You just equal IRR, open parentheses, right? And then just click and drag your cash flows, close parentheses, and hit enter. Okay, that's how we get to an internal rate of return. Now, therefore, what is this thing called the internal rate of return? Well, technically, the definition is that it is the discount rate that causes the net present value to equal zero. And we're going to prove that right now. So take a look, right? We see here, these are all future values. These are all future values. At the end of year one, I'm going to get 5,000 coming to me. At the end of year two, I'll get 5,500, right? You're following along. At the end of year three, I'm going to get 8,000 all the way out to year five when I'm going to have cash into me. Net inflow is 360. Okay. 
but we have to recognize that these are all numbers that are going to come in the future. This is today's money. I've got to write a check for 150 in order to uh, get into the deal. That's my cash out. I know that number. Why? Because it's today. It's present value. These are all future values, right? So then what I have to do here in order to make this case <clears throat> and prove this is correct, which we will, is to take all of these future values and put them in present value. We know from class that we must know three knowns before we can solve for any one unknown, right? You've heard this in class before. What are our three knowns? Well, we know that we know N, we know FV, and we know I. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this $5,000. We're going to bring it back to present value, right? This is at the end of year one. So this is a future value. So that at the end of year one, we're going to get 5,000. So if I discount this future value back at one N for one year, at the internal rate of return, this $5,000 future value today is worth 4103 discounted back at the IRR. Okay, so this is future value, this is I, this is N, this then is our present value. Watch how I do it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go up here to formulas, recently used PV. If you don't have it recently used, then just go to financial and drop down here to PV. Okay. The rate is going to be my internal rate of return. The number is going to be one, one year future value. My future value is 5,000. Therefore, my present value is 4,103. Now we remember from class that when we're dealing with present value and future value, the signs have to be different. They have to be the opposite. Otherwise, the calculation just simply will not work. So we know then that if we're going to get this money in one year, we have to put out 4,103 in order to get 5,000 at 21.87% interest at the end of year one. Let's do this for the, for the second year, okay? Let's just do another present value. Go over to recently used PV, okay? My rate is going to be my IRR. My period number is two my future value is 5,500. So therefore, my present value is 3,703. Okay, let's go all the way out here to year five. Just do the same thing. We'll go up here to recently used, present value. My rate is the IRR. My period number is five. My future value is 360. Therefore, this $360,000 at the end of year five is worth today discounted back by the IRR, 133,900 and change. Okay, now watch. This is the whole point of this exercise. Because what we've just done is we've taken all of these future values and we've discounted the back to present value, right? 360 at the end of year five, today is worth 133 at 21.87. 8,500 at the end of year four, today, is worth 38.53 discounted back by 21.87. At the end of year three, this 8,000 at the end of year three today is worth 44.20 discounted back by 21.87. So now watch. You see here that the IRR is going to be the discount rate that is going to cause all of these future values discounted back to present value to equal the amount of my initial investment. Watch, 150 out at time zero. But all of these future values today are worth 150. So therefore, my 150 out plus the sum of all my present values, 150, is going to equal zero. I've got $150,000 that I put into the deal at the very beginning, time zero. And then all of these future values today are worth 150. Therefore, therefore, the internal rate of return is the discount rate that causes the net present value to equal zero. Bam.
We've just proven it. It's that simple. Okay. Now here's, now this is the way to do it kind of the longhand way. And I've told many of my students over the years that the best way to learn these calculations is to do them by hand. So what I stress is a financial calculator where we actually chart out the cash flows and then compound them to future values or discount them back to present values. Chart it all out on paper, the old fashioned way. Now, the spreadsheet clearly is going to do it more quickly, more efficiently, but it's the same concept. We're proving the same thing. Okay. Now watch what I did here. In Excel, you can do this much more quickly rather than taking all of these future values and discounting them back and then adding them up and stuff like that. That's a great academic exercise to prove the point, which we just did, that the internal rate of return is the discount rate which causes the net present value to equal zero. But we can do this a lot more effectively. Watch. If I go up to Excel here and I go to recently used or financial, either way, it'll work. NPV, watch. I'm going to take my rate as the IRR. Okay? Then for value, I'm simply going to click and drag all of my numbers here, including my time zero. Okay, and then I'm going to release and hit OK because the net present value here is zero. So in Excel, we can do it a lot more efficiently, but we can still prove it in this particular way. So that's how you prove that the uh, internal rate of return is the discount rate, in fact, that causes the net present value to equal zero. Now, the next little step in this to kind of take this to its next, to its next level is to say, well, OK, if I know what my numbers are for this particular investment opportunity, which is this, the 21.87, right? And then I know that that's going to equal zero if I discount all of these future values back by the, by the IRR. It'll always equal zero for NPV. But then what if I'm also looking at an alternative investment scenario? Because as we, as, as we remember from class, these numbers just don't simply exist in a vacuum. We have to use these numbers to compare them to other investment opportunities that we might be considering, right? The cap rate. The cap rate is an unleveraged return, but what point is it if we're not looking at an alternative? Same thing with the internal rate of return, right? We know that this particular scenario, this deal, is going to give us, if, if these numbers work out, 21.87%. That's my total yield. That's my return. All right. Not bad. But then what if there's an alternative that might be showing us a higher rate of return or a lower rate of return? This is what this particular chart then shows us. If I can earn a 10% yield on something else, then this investment here is going to give me a positive net present value right? Think of it. I'm making 21.87% on my money here in this one. If all I could make was 10 on something else, then this investment here is going to create for me $85,000 more wealth than my alternative at 10%. Similarly, on the flip side of this is true. If an alternative investment out there could yield me a 30% return. This deal here is only giving me 21.87, right? My 150 out, all these future values coming in is going to yield me 21, 22%. Well, if I could get 30% on something else, then if I invested in this deal, I'm going in the hole by $30,000 in change. So it begs the question. Why would anybody want to invest in this deal, even at 21, 22% when it's going to cause me a loss in wealth when I could get 30 on something else? So as, we're go as we just did, we have proven that the internal rate of return is the discount rate that causes this net present value to equal zero. And what I want you to start thinking about, quite frankly, is this, that we want to look at investment scenarios, especially in real estate, both with an eye toward the internal rate of return 
and the net present value. We want to look at both of these metrics simultaneously. So at class this week, we're going to kind of uh, dive into this a little bit more deeply and then prove up yet again, sorry to repeat it, but you're right, repetition is the key to mastery. The internal rate of return is the discount rate that causes the net present value to equal zero. I'm hopeful that is helpful and that you are enjoying class. I'll see you soon.